I'm Rhonda Buss and we are going to talk about sewing the collar and the belt loops for the Soaholic Robson coat. The collar is a beautiful collar. For a lot of people, if you were to look at it, it has an under collar and the other under collar is cut on the bias. So it gives a very nice roll to the collar. Um, the top collar is cut on the straight of grain. When you match the two together, if you haven't had a lot of experience with sewing collars, you might think that this is a mistake. It's not a mistake at all. What happens is you pin this together and bring the edges together all the way around so that they are matching at this point and then sew your collar seam. What will happen is once this has been sewn, you will see on the back of the jacket, on the back of the collar, and it's part of what gives it just such a very, very nice shape and helps it to hold its place. The top collar actually rolls over and you can see there's about a quarter inch extra of the top collar on the back. Once that, hit, that seam has been sewn, you can see I also did a small little edge stitch right along here, which also helps to hold the collar in place. When you get your collar cut out and you start to put it together, please, please don't think that this is a mistake and cut them off evenly. Um, it'll make for a much nicer collar. Now the other thing that I'd like to talk about is the belt loops. Of course, this is a traditional on a trench coat. Belt loops are a must to have with the tie. So the seam allowances on this coat, unless they're otherwise specified, are 5 8 inch wide seams. So this is the belt loop pattern piece and I've stitched it with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Once that's stitched, you'll then trim the seam down and turn it. The way I like to turn loops of just about any kind is with a bodkin. I think these are fabulous tools. They're really quite old. You can see it has a ball on one end and a big loop like a big needle head at the other end. What you would do is just stick it inside this, take your needle and thread, sew a couple of loops to secure it in, and then push this to the other side. And of course, if I had trimmed all of my seam allowance, then it would be quite easy to push it all the way through. It's a whole lot easier than using a safety pin. Um, a lot of the loop turners, I just, this is just my favorite. And I, I, they're not expensive. You can find them at your local fabric store quite easily. They do come in different lengths. Um, this one is a, I believe a six inch. Yes, it's a six inch length bodkin. Uh, one of my favorites. So these, this is something that you should definitely have in your sewing basket. One other thing to talk about is that she calls these storm vents. And of course, this is here to keep the thought behind it anyway, is to help to keep the back a little bit warmer. You know, if you're out in the rain, it helps to shed the rain away so that the, you don't get wet underneath. Um, really and truly, it makes for just a, a lovely accent piece for the coat. When you sew this together, what's nice is it's lined on both sides. And then the epaulettes are sewn at the shoulders. This piece is then basted onto the coat prior to sewing the collar and the facing on. One last thing that I would like to talk about are the sleeves. The sleeves have a very nice detail with a tab. It's a little bit difficult to mess it up, but just in case, you'll note that there are notches on the side of the sleeve, and the tab is matched exactly to those notches. The one thing you want to remember is that this tab should go around the arm toward the back. You don't want it coming around toward the front. 
And here's one that's been finished. The back seams, or the, the underarm seams have all been top stitched, the tabs in place. The seam binding has been added to the hem of the sleeve. So everything is all set to go and it's just ready to be set into the coat itself. Next we'll be talking about the buttons. Mm -hmm.